This time, I will present to you another statistical technique, the correlation. Correlation is a bivariate analysis that measures the strength of association between two variables. Bivariate means involving or relating to variables. And the variables are not designated as dependent or independent. The main result of a correlation is called coefficient R. Now, let's consider the Pearson correlation coefficient. Pearson correlation coefficient measures the strength and direction of linear relationships between pairs of continuous variables that are approximately normally distributed. Hence, we can say that the Pearson correlation is a parametric statistical technique. The equation used to determine the correlation coefficient is given here. So the variables will be named as variables x and y. So the equation reads the Pearson correlation coefficient r is equal to summation of x minus mean of x times y minus mean of y divided by the product of the square root of the summation of x minus mean of x squared and square root of the summation of y minus mean of y squared. Now, let's consider this illustration. The illustration consists of the scatter plots and the rule of thumb used, to, used for interpreting the size of the R. Okay, scatter plots are presentations of values of x and y using the Cartesian coordinates. Now, let's consider our first scatter plot. So, if the x variable is placed on the horizontal axis, the y variable is placed on the vertical axis, if the points form a straight line sloping upward to the right, it means that r is equal to 1. And it will be interpreted as very high positive correlation. So it means to say that as x increases, y increases proportionately. Now, let's consider the second scatter plot. So this time, the resulting line is a straight line sloping downward to the right. So this time, the r is equal to negative 1, which can be interpreted as high or very high negative correlation so it means to say that as x increases y decreases proportionately on this scatter plot uh, the points did not form any line therefore r is equal to zero it means that uh, we have negligible correlation and the last scatter plot we have here a curve it's not a straight line, therefore the values could be found anywhere in the range of interpretations. Now let's apply the concept. So our exercise number 5 reads the time, that's the X, in years that an employee spent at a company and the employee's hourly pay, that's variable Y, for four employees are listed in the table below is their correlation between time spent at the company and hourly pay use the Pearson correlation coefficient R so our first column here presents the number of years the employees have been in the company that's the X and then the second column are the uh, data for the hourly pay that would be considered as variable Y. So it means to say that the first employee has been in the company for five years and receiving an hourly pay of 250. The second employee has been in the company for three years and receiving 200 as hourly pay. The third is uh, the third employee have been in the company for four years and receiving 210. And the last employee has been in the company for 10 years receiving 350 
So, what are we going to do to determine the value of the Pearson correlation coefficient? First, we need to get the sum. So, sum means you have to add. So, you have to add all the values on the x and all the values on the y. Therefore, these are the sum. So, you have 22 for the years in the company and 1,010 for the hourly pay. Next, we also need to have the mean or the average. It means that we will be dividing 22 by 4 since we have 4 employees. And 1,010 will be divided by 4 also. So, the mean or the average years in the company of those employees would be 5.5. And the average or the mean hourly pay is 252.5. The next column is labeled as x minus mean. Therefore, we will be subtracting the mean of x from the values of uh, x. So, our first entry would be negative 0 0.5. It came from 5 minus 5.5. So, the same procedure applies uh, on the succeeding values. Now, this, the next column is x minus mean squared. So, we will be simply uh, squaring the values we obtained in the third column. So, the first entry would be 0 0.25. We just multiply negative 0 0.5 by itself. So, same procedure uh, will be used to fill the column. Next column is y minus mean of y. So we will be uh, dealing with the values of y and the mean of y. So our first entry would be 250 minus 252.5. So the result is negative 2.5. So same uh, procedure must be followed. Next column is the y minus mean of y squared. So we will be squaring the values. Okay, so the first entry would be 6.25, which came from negative 2.5 times negative 2.5. Okay, and the final column would be the product of x minus mean of x and y minus mean of y. So in other words, we will be multiplying the values from this column and the values uh, on this column. So our first entry would be 1.25. So that would be negative 0 0.5 times negative 2.5 and we have to complete the table next we need to get the sum of the x minus mean of x squared the y minus mean of y squared and the product of x minus mean of x and y minus mean of y and now we will be using our equation now to solve for the Pearson correlation coefficient r so by substitution so it's very clear where we get those numbers this is the 635 we got from the last column the sum of the numbers on the last column and then the 29 from this sum and the 14,075 by calculation the result is 0 0.99 and it is interpreted as very high positive correlation. We got it from our table earlier. So the value is 0 0.99 interpreted as very high positive correlation. Now how do we present the result? We can present the result this way. So it could be in table form. So I place here the number of respondents which is 4 and then the mean. Of uh, the time in years 5.5 hourly pay 252.5 the Pearson's correlation coefficient R is 0 0.99 and the interpretation is very high positive correlation